can like analyze this and kind of trace this. What type of flower is it? What type of families make these? Yeah. This design, this pattern. A photo that a local historian and uh, Métis expert, he gave me this photo. Mm -hmm. And this is a photo of the Métis families. The ones at that location. Yeah, at well, you've seen the you've seen yeah, the yeah. landscape yeah, probably taken around 1879, 1880. What a cool and picture! And tracing it with the census from another master student that was able to identify those five families. So with that, we can kind of pinpoint which women <laughs> yeah, wow, really? were there. I mean, that's cool. Like as an archaeologist, those are the sorts of things that you you have to you have to find something like that. And this is the importance of the historic side of. Um, historical archaeology because you can yeah. really put that uh, that history, the yeah. photos, the individuals, and you can put, you can probably say that this beadwork was made by one of these five women. Yeah, Marguerite and Marie. It's hard to really trace the descendant communities now because a lot of them took uh, took scrip. Scrip is what the government uh, did to sort of try to settle the Métis. So mm -hmm. they offered, if you, if you register that you are Métis and you take scrip, you're either getting money or land and from that point on uh, the government kind of decided there's no more obligation they owe the Métis after that and a big problem with that though is that each family's even like five kids in a family they'd be assigned land all over Western Canada just randomly oh. instead of trying to keep them together mm -hmm. which is something um, of course divide yeah divide and conquer yeah it was yeah. literally a kind of a game of divide and conquer yeah so. exactly it sounds like the Indian Act yeah yeah, yeah. exactly I tried to trace through the census some of the family members, mm -hmm. um, the Métis family members. Yeah. It's really hard, and it's really hard to because people's last names change. And yeah. a common theme of Métis uh, people are to really kind of like hide their heritage and hide their, yeah. um, you know, their background and stuff like that, and just try to. Yeah, there's like, a lot of people that hid their First Nations ancestry just yeah. out of protecting themselves. You know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for showing us this. <laughs> yeah. This was like, yeah. I mean, it's really cool to see what we found, but to see like that and like see how it's connecting to the actual stories of the people and the images that are here. I mean, that that completes a story. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. it's 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 one thing to try to even. It, it's so difficult to try to get the Métis story, mm -hmm. and it's even harder to get the women's story yeah. right on top of that. So through those layers, I mean, through some of these artifacts, through the domestic artifacts within a cabin, mm -hmm. we can try to tell part of their story. Yeah. And I love that. I love the yeah. fact that there's there's just such a focus on finding mm -hmm. out the women's stories, especially at this particular site. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because the women are so integral to, well, the whole family, the unit, yeah. the whole... The whole fur trade. The whole fur trade, the <laughs> yeah. whole history of right. the West. Yeah. 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 And you never know, some of the beads we've found might have yeah. At some point, been a part of that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Sweet. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. This, yeah. Was, this was fantastic. Yeah, no worries. That.